right, Daniel. So the other day we went wing foiling and I was like right behind you and I called out, go for a big jump, Daniel. And then and then what happened? Uh, <laughs> so Rob, me and Robert was riding at the same time and um, I was kind of concentrating on Robert to see if he wanted me to jump and how close he was. And then when I kind of went into the wave, he told, well, I was asking him, should I jump it? And he was like, yeah, go for it, jump it. So I went for it and kind of, uh, in in my mind was kind of like a little bit distracting that Robert was kind of close and yeah, for me to jump it. You, yeah, I looked ready? back and <laughs> yeah. kind of hesitated for a little bit. So I think uh, when I went up and tried to land with all that hesitation, I kind of fell off and the board flipped in the air from what I seen in the video and landed right on top of my my ozone five meter wing. And lucky Brenda. Uh, came to the rescue and she she helped when I was done winging and fixed my kite on my yeah. wing. Yeah, and it's funny too because you were talking to her right before and like when you said goodbye to her, you said something like, I, I, "What did you?" Yeah, tell I told her, "I hope to see you here again, uh, winging and windsurfing, and not at your house." <laughs> and sure enough, a couple hours later, I called her up and I said. This is Daniel, and she was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I heard you say that, and like 10 minutes later, you had a hole in your wing. Yeah. But then you kept going, and, and it was actually all right, yeah? Or... Yeah, I kept going, and then I finally made one uh, uh, air. And yeah, I think I was kind of upset that I made a hole in my my wing, so it's Yeah, but then bomb. that second time, it was like a perfect yeah, landing. So and it landed, so that was yeah. Perfect, yeah. Yeah. And then the repair came out pretty good, right? Repair same, came same out awesome. Same day repair by yeah. Brenda, so we'll tag her too, um, or put, put her number in the text below if you need a wing yeah. repair. All right, Daniel, so can you give us some pointers on, on jumping? Like, can you walk us through like the, the takeoff, the, the jump, and then the landing? Um, taking off, kind of going straight into the wind, and I'm kind of trying to find out like uh, in the wind, you don't want to go away from the wind because you'll take more of a heavy impact landing and so I kind of just stay inside the wind uh, like a parachute and then kind of come down so you can land kind of soft. Yeah and I've, I've noticed if you do it right you can actually come down with it's pretty soft. You can like, come down soft. In the beginning I think we we're just like jumping up and then like just crashing down pretty hard but yeah. you use the wind and really load up on the, on the and uh, before you take off, if you load up and then really turn into the wind, that, that helps Turn a lot. into the wind and pointing and the, hanging the, wing, yeah. wind, the wing into the wind yeah. and just hang inside there like a parachute. Just hang on your wing. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Daniel. Okay, so all this footage was shot with a back-mounted camera. And I borrowed this from my friend Bob Bond. And he made it years ago for windsurfing using a windsurfing harness and had like a boom mounted on the back of the harness and then I have just a regular GoPro on top I want to try it with a um, GoPro 360 or GoPro Max one of those new ones I don't have one yet but I think that'll be a good angle for that as well but it's a pretty cool angle and uh, this was a few days before um, that whole thing with Daniel and this is the first time I was trying this mount and I think on just on the second wave riding it I um, you know, I was using it with my five meter duo tone wing and I, I lost my grip on the, on the wing and I was still riding on the way. So I tried to get the wing back, but my, my foil stalled and I fell backwards right on top of the wing. And that mount has like a sharp corner at the top. Uh, of course, I didn't think about padding it or anything, which of course I did afterwards, but yeah, falling into the wing, I ripped a big hole into my, into my wing. So, yeah, I mean, these wings are pretty lightweight and it's a lightweight fabric. It's a ripstop fabric, but it rips pretty easily. So the foil or anything sharp falling onto the wing will definitely rip a hole into it. So hopefully you can learn from our mistakes and um, not have that happen to you. But, you know, after I fell into the wing, I had this big hole. You can see that here with the right next to the window. And, uh, but the wing was still flying fine, so I kept going for a while. Um, but after my session, I took it to Brenda, and she fixed it the same day. So it's really great service. And um, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna put her phone number down in the description below. So if you're in Oahu and you need uh, your wing repaired, call up Brenda, she's, she's great. 
and then uh, the, a few days after I shot this, I was out at a different spot, and there were some bigger waves, and my my wing got you know after I got it repaired and everything, um, it got caught in a wave, uh, and uh, ripped out of my hands, and and it ripped the leash, and then also the boom came off the wing, like the velcro came off on the back, the whole boom fell off the wing. And uh, and it started just tumbling, blowing away, and uh, a bunch of people tried to catch it, but it was just too hard to catch. Without the boom, it, it was just tumbling out on the water, going really fast. And I ended up driving downwind to all the way to Waikiki, a couple miles down from where I was. And uh, I talked to some the lifeguards in Kaimana Beach. They said they saw someone at Tongs pulling it in. And then luckily, just today, I found out about two weeks later. Um, that somebody found it so I do appreciate uh, getting it back so hopefully tomorrow I'll get that wing back but um, that can happen so it's a good idea to also put your name and phone number on the wing maybe because then that would have been made it a lot easier to for the person who found it to get it back to me so anyways this is another session it's a pretty windy day. Um, luckily, we've had good wind for about two the last two weeks, so I didn't really need my five meter. I've been able to use my four meter wing. Um, and uh, I'm, this is another session with Daniel, kind of going in and out, catching some rides. So on, on the duo tone, uh, I, when I'm riding the wave, I don't hold the front handle. You can see here I'm slide my hand to the front of the boom. There's that plastic piece. A lot of times I just grab that plastic piece and that way I'm able to control the boom really well or control the, the wing so it doesn't flip flop back and forth while I'm riding the wave. On this wing you can see I have a, a repair using tape. So on um, that white uh, tape part. So that one also, I, um, the foil broke, broke the fabric on the wing when the foil flipped upside down onto the wing and I got some sail repair tape and just taped it together and that worked really well too and I also put a link to that in the in the description below so if you want to do it like a do-it-yourself repair or you don't have a someone like Brenda that can sew it for you that sail repair tape works pretty well for for smaller tears anyway I wouldn't use it for a big tear like the one I had right next to the window or something like that you definitely need to get a professional repair <clears throat> so riding out here it's a fun spot um, definitely this day was nice and windy probably about 20 knots maybe more um, nice steady wind and for jumping having strong wind definitely helps because it kind of holds you up in the air a little bit easier to um, pull off the landing as well. If the wind's light, you can still jump and get up in the air, but it's just harder to pull off the landing because you don't have the wind pulling you back out of the out of the landing. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're all just still learning. Uh, riding the wave, I tried to turn all the way through the turn instead of just riding the wave straight down, straight going left or right, doing some carving turns. Here's a jibe flipping the wing the other way, kind of like a duck jibe in windsurfing. Uh, another w different way to jibe, it's just flipping the, the wing the opposite way basically than normal. <clears throat> so riding with Daniel has been pretty fun. I, you know, I try to get right behind him or follow him and we're riding the waves together. Um, so that's always uh, kind of fun trying to get get him in the camera at the same time. Of course, it's not something I would do with someone that doesn't doesn't expect me to be there. <laughs> so, also you know, jiving into the into a wave that someone else is on is definitely a no no, uh, not good etiquette. But you know, in this case, I'm filming, so I'm being rude and trying to get the footage. So um, you know, jiving into the wave and then uh, sliding the hand forward on the boom up and just luffing the wing. It's pretty fun, it's a fun move. Um, so, and if you kind of go out with good speed and jive right onto the wave, you can basically go from 
the jibe right into riding waves, riding the wave without needing to power up the wing. Like here, I don't have enough, quite enough speed, so I'm using the power of the wing and then letting it go. And there, we're riding wave together. And uh, so one thing I like about the duo tone is the boom, you know, like I keep saying that, I think, but um, I've tried some wings with the handles and just didn't like it that much. Here you can see I'm switching from overhand grip with my front hand to underhand grip, and then sliding it forward a little bit as I'm driving. So those are things that are just kind of hard to do with handles. You can't like adjust your grip here and just sliding it more forward and then bluffing it. So um, with handles, it's much harder to, to like change your grip. And here in, in when I'm tacking, I'm doing a slow motion here, bringing the wing over my head, getting it to the other side, turning through the wind, and then basically powering the wing up once I turn through the wind so it pulls me out of it. If you power the wing up too early before you turn through the wind, it can actually slow you down and uh, um, slow down your tack. So you don't want to power up the wing until you turn through the wind into the new direction. So, you know, I find just watching video of winging is definitely helpful. Um, watching others, watching yourself, just um, thinking about it. I think, like, Daniel is just amazing. He goes out like three, four hours every day. And, you know, he's right now, he's off work. He, he works at a hotel, so the, um, that's the same footage, footage as earlier. But, um, you know, Daniel's just had lots of time on his hands, but he's also just so um, methodical about it. You know, he's like watches videos, he analyzes it, he thinks about it, and and it's amazing the amount of improvement he's had over just a few months. I mean, I think if you've watched some of the earlier voiceover videos, you can uh, see, it. like the one at Kihi Lagoon, is when he was just learning, you know, he was just learning how to jibe and uh, getting up on the foil. Never really windsurfed or kite surfed before, so he had no wind, wind sport experience. But just going out every day, every windy day, and, and being out there for hours and getting practice and repetition and then analyzing what he's doing uh, really helped him to improve it and I would say now he's probably better than most of us so um, within just a couple months of practice so you know being methodical definitely is a good thing here I did a jibe and then attack into attack that was a not a very good jump uh, but yeah, so my, you know, the point is just like, you know, practicing, watching, thinking about it after the session, obviously doing all those things is, um, helps you improve and, and it's just a fun thing too. If you're enjoying it, why not, uh, do it a lot. So one thing about the camera on my back, it kind of got caught in the boom pretty easily. So I always had to, when I'm tacking, I have to make sure that I bring the wing up pretty high over my head, otherwise the boom would get caught on the camera behind me. And of course, since that first day I, I used it and I cut a big hole into my sail, I put um, a big padded top on top of the camera, so now there's no sharp edges anywhere, it's, it's very padded, so even if I do fall on my wing again, hopefully nothing will happen because everything is uh, soft and padded, so no sharp edges, I made sure of that. So here you can see my hand gripping that, that front of the boom. That's where I can control it. Just um, if you hold the handle on the duo tone, especially if you're going fast or it's windy, it's really hard to control that, that wing. And here you can see when I'm going upwind, I hold, oh, here I was gonna talk about uh, the start water starting. So I flip the wing in the water before I get on the board and I do that by kind of just flipping it over from one end. I hold it right next to the rail. So the the wing, the flotation from the wing helps me balance. I kind of push it underwater to help me balance when I balance. Then I quickly bring it up over my head. And then once it's over my head and have some wind in the wing, it's more stable and I can get up on my feet. And then I pump the wing and the foil at the same time, the kind of hopping up and down on the foil and pumping the wing. 
and then that helps me get up on foil. So I think I'm going to show a couple more uh, water starts to just um, to show it, visualize how how I do it. Um, some other people like Derek likes to stand up on his board uh, uh, while the wing is still in the water. So he stabilizes himself with the wing, stands up, and then he lifts up the wing over his head. So he's already in standing position before he brings the wing over his head. I like to do it from my knees, starting from my knees, so that I find that a little bit easier and just more used to it. But there's many different ways. And of course, um, the size of the board makes a big difference too. The smaller and the lower volume the board is, the more challenging it is to start with it. So um, definitely on Oahu, we have a lot of days when the wind is not that steady. So there's holes in the wind and, and having a very small board that's not floating you makes it a lot more challenging to get going. So on those days when there's lulls and not, not much wind, you spend more time in the water. But the upside to using a really small low volume board is that it's just more maneuverable, lighter weight, uh, less swing weight, just um, more high performance foiling. So here's that jump again from earlier. That's the second one he did after he had that hole in the wing, pulled it off nicely. And I've seen Daniel actually pulling off jumps like that without even uh, his board touching the water at all. Just coming down and landing it fully foiling uh, full speed without without the board touching the water, which is pretty cool. I've never been able to do that yet. Uh, just the landing without the board touching the wall down at all. Okay, so here's another session with, uh, with the camera mount. Uh, so, and you're launching here, you have to go over a shallow reef. So on the inside, if you don't get up quickly on your foil, you just have to go back and forth until you get a nice gust that allows you to get up on the foil. And then you can kind of skim over the reef while you're up on the foil. But if you're not foiling, that you're gonna hit bottom. So it's a little bit tricky getting out. But then once you're out in the waves there, then it's deep enough and not so much of an issue. <clears throat> I think this day uh, Jeff's out there and having fun with the four meter wing and my board is a 5.2 carver foil board um, that's just a great uh, wing foil board I mean it's designed for stand-up foiling but it's also great for wing foiling here I'm riding backwind it can't quite pull it off but um, so that's something I've been working on the, the backwind at 360s or you know just riding the wave backwinded definitely a tricky move to do what I found that something that helps is doing it in light wind when you're a little bit underpowered if you're really powered up and it's windy it's much harder to pull off this move so here I'm getting back on the board again this is how I do it get up on my knees use the uh, wing for balancing get it over my head and then another thing that's kind of important is to put your weight a little bit on the windward rail. So when I'm on my knees, I have to make sure I keep my weight on the windward rail so I don't lose balance as I'm standing up. And then I like to put both feet in my straps, you know, depending on how your board is set up. But that's one nice thing about the carver, the way the volume is balanced, you can stand right on top of the foil and the board will float you so you don't have to move your feet around after you're up on foil which is a, a really nice feature it makes it easier because you can already be in the right position before you come up on the foil so riding a wave sometimes you know you can get some pretty good speed um, the, the definitely these, these duotone wings kind of can be a handful to manage so that's why I always hold the handle and the handle in the front and or hold the boom in the front instead of holding the handle yeah checking driving into the wave sliding the hand forward and then riding the wave Can see that here and then yeah, hold it at the very front of the boom or that little plastic piece that helps me balance it the good thing about that too is that once you uh, need need to bring the wing back over your head, it's just easy to just slide the other hand on top and 
and uh, use both hands on the boom again when you need a little bit more power and the wind wave drops off a little bit. Uh, but if I, whenever I can, I'll try to like, just do a little pumping. The wave slows down instead of just grabbing the wing right away. Sometimes you can just pump and keep it going. <sighs> and this was this day was pretty windy again. That was like probably 15 to 20, maybe a little bit higher winds. People always ask like the what's what was the wind speed. So and then on the wall it just changes a lot. Like uh, Fabian, who's always on the beach, he always says, "If you don't like the weather, just wait ten minutes," because <laughs> it keeps changing. Like when the rain comes through, uh, we'll have like a uh, wind. The wind picks up right as it um, before the rain comes, and then after the rain, there'll be a lull when there's almost no wind for a while, and then it'll start picking up again. So it's a lot up and down. Here I'm getting up on the board again. So one tip is to just flip the wing over from the side. Like if you get on one end of the wing and you can just like tip it over pretty easily instead of trying to be in the middle, hold the wing from the middle and try to flip it upside down. It's much harder to get it to flip over. Here the wind was pretty strong so it just lifted me up on the foil without even having to do any pumping. So uh, a lot of beginners like using, being kind of overpowered with a bigger wing and a bigger foil because it just makes it easier to get up on the on the foil at lower speeds but as you get better and especially if you want to ride waves or do tricks um, we we try to kind of minimize the size of the wing and the foil size same as the board you basically want to use a small board a small foil and a small wing uh, because once you're up and riding um, you know you don't need as much size basically once you get speed uh, then th there's more wind pressure in your wing and, uh, and on a smaller foil you can just go faster and, uh, and do more high performance moves whereas a big foil will just slow you down and will not uh, be as easy to maneuver and, and do turns and so on so uh, we, we, we're always trying to figure out what's, what's the smallest wing and foil and board we can use for the conditions and, but then obviously when the wind gets lighter uh, then you have to switch to bigger gear. Uh, because, I, because I've been using that 4 meter only, I lost my 5 meter wing. So I've only been using a 4 meter, so on the lighter wind days I've been just trying to use a bigger foil instead of going up to a bigger wing. I just use a bigger size foil and that's actually also pretty effective. Oh, This was another session today. You can see here I have a shim underneath the plate mount. So it's shimmed this is from Levitas. They sent me a, like a 3D printed shim. It's basically angling the angle of incidence uh, flattens it out a little bit. So uh, I've noticed that sometimes when I'm going fast, it seems that uh, I'm riding with the nose kind of sl almost slightly pointed downwards to control it. So by shimming it, um, it basically lifts the nose up a little bit when you're foiling. So you can um, ride it with a little bit more nose up so I find it it just um, seems to work pretty well so I think uh, I wanted to test that out because I'm working on new uh, foil board designs uh, you know making the shaping files for new foil board wing foil boards and uh, I think I'm going to add you know instead of having it completely flat in the back without any rocker I think it actually works better with a slight rocker maybe one degree or so one and a half degrees of rocker in the tail actually makes the board ride a little bit more neutral because you don't really want the nose to be pointing down when you're going fast because then if you touch down just slightly with the nose it'll it'll dig in right away whereas if you're uh, if you're the board's more flat or even up a little bit with the nose uh, it makes it maybe slightly diffic more difficult to get lift in the beginning to take off but it's just more comfortable to ride at speed and if you're coming down a wave at full speed, you don't want the nose to be having to point down to control the foil. Because then, yeah, if you touch down slightly, it, you're just, you can't control the board. So that was my experience. And um, I think in that, in the, I'm going to incorporate that into, into the board design. So you don't have to use a shim to get that same effect. Basically, just a slight, slight like uh, angle of rocker in the tail. 
something to think about if you're shaping shaping a wing foiling board maybe don't make it completely flat in the tail you might want to just have a slight small amount of rocker like one degree that's what i found helps but of course it always depends on what foil you use and you can actually do the same thing possibly with the, by changing the, the tail shim on the tail wing shimming the tail wing differently there's different ways to achieve it but um if the foil has a slight angle of incidence uh, it help it does help with the lift initially but it also makes it, it the board ride kind of weird if there's too much angle between the foil and the board you basically want it to ride um, at almost zero degrees angle of incidence with the board flat to the surface of the water parallel if that makes sense it's kind of technical speak here but um, yeah you're riding the wave again trying to turn the board all the way through this was yeah today's session see my leash is getting all stretched out this was an ozone leash that had a, a rubber band inside but and a wave that band just inside the wrist leash just snapped so now I have a really long leash that just kind of flaps around which is kind of annoying I have to figure out a better way to attach the leash another thing I've noticed is um, there's another jump Jeff nice um, I've noticed that like when I'm riding in the waves the the leash gets all twisted up so um, I'm gonna put a little swivel on on the leash for sure that every wrist leash should have a swivel because in the waves if you're jiving a lot jiving tacking tacking jiving and turning um, the leash will just get wound up more and more and more and then over time it just kind of gets all tangled and stuff so I think it makes a lot of sense uh, for the manufacturers if you're listening uh, make your wrist leashes with a swivel here I'm um, trying to jump Daniel was in front of me and he did a jump I tried to jump at the same time didn't quite work out but I think that'll make a cool angle if we both um, jump on the same wave and I'm following him so we, we get um, both jumps in one image something to work on for future videos <clears throat> but yeah I also have some good footage from Jeff that I haven't been able to go through yet um, Jeff's had, uh, getting some good footage with his off of the nose of his board, and uh, oh, this is Kimo. Kimo was the one who helped me find my wing, so thanks for that. Appreciate it, Kimo. And uh, so hopefully tomorrow I'll have my bigger wing again, and I think next week the wind's going to get lighter, so it'll be nice to have my five meter back. And I think um, we also just got our shipment of the new Duotone Echo Wings. Um, not very, not many, but uh, there's one extra six meter wing, so I might get a six meter Duotone Echo, one of the new ones. I'm gonna give that one a try and uh, and also do a little feedback video on how that handles differently than the original wing foil Duotone that I've been using for the last year or so. Yeah, like I said, uh, hopefully some of the improvements are just better handling on the wave. And then, uh, I mean, supposedly it also has more um, tension, more leech tension, basically. Uh, that's something that you notice on the Duotone is that when you sheet it in, that there's like quite a bit of floppiness in it. Like um, you can see here, like the, the there's a lot of twist and kind of looseness around the back of the, the wing. So uh, hopefully those improvements will be noticeable and looking forward to trying a six. I've never really had a six meter wing. Um, so to see how, how light of a wind you can go in with a bigger, bigger wing. Yeah, so and riding with one hand is definitely something that you can really only do when you have a boom. With the handles is just too difficult to find that exact position where you want your hand. And, uh, and I just like having the boom because you can grab it without looking. You can, like if I'm tacking or even jiving, or I can just grab the boom anywhere and, uh, and I don't have to look where to, where to position it. Even right here when, when I'm grabbing underneath the wing to grab it, I don't have to look where the handle is. I can just grab the boom. So that's it. Thanks for watching. 
Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Aloha.